I came to DDC LTD again to talk to Zoltan Fekete from Fekete Hi. Diagnostica. Hi Zoltan. Let's talk about a very important topic, at least in my opinion, that the AdBlue technology has been introduced in diesel cars manufactured since 2014. What are the advantages and the disadvantages of this? What is the system? How can we maintain this whole system better? Please tell me a few words about this. Well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to participate in this. AdBlue technology was created because the regulations prescribing environmental standards required the reduction of nitrogen oxide in diesel vehicles. Diesels are characterized by nitrogen oxide emissions, which were brought to a peak with Euro 6. The only solution to this was to install the AdBlue system in the system. The system itself is structured in such a way that the exhaust gas is combined with an injected so-called urea liquid to produce ammonia, which binds the nitrogen oxide, breaks it down into its components, and then the exhaust gas is released. But without nitrogen oxide, this is what AdBlue is for. The AdBlue liquid itself is a 32.5% urea liquid, so it is a liquid mixed with purified water. Quality is very important here. I would like to touch on this because the quality of the products you can buy here and there from unreliable places affects the operation of the system itself. We inject in a controlled manner. Typically, this injection starts when the engine is warm. By warm, I mean not when it reaches the operating temperature according to the clock, but when the exhaust system, the entire system, is completely warmed up, then the signal comes through the thermometers that we are injecting. There is a component called an SCR catalyst built into the car. It is hidden in one of the drums of the exhaust system. We inject into it, or we inject the carbonite liquid into it before that. This should be imagined as the injection valve, like a vapor barrier. Everyone has seen it. Like a vapor barrier, a liquid injection occurs. There is a pressure of about six bars in the system. This is built up by a pump in the system itself. It is injected, it has to be mixed well, and into the SCR catalyst, which captures the nitrogen or nitrogen oxide, this is where this chemical process takes place. You should know that urea fluid freezes at minus 11 degrees. So the system is heated in several places, including the tank, pipes, and the injection valve, so that it can thaw from minus degrees as soon as possible so that if it freezes, it can melt and work. Another characteristic of this fluid is that it crystallizes. So when it is exposed to the open air, it can leave a mark like melted powdered sugar. The water would evaporate from it and such a crystalline liquid is created. There is this leak in the system, right? It typically appears constantly in our parking lot. And this is a sign that you should take it to a service center somewhere because this system is dripping. As a user, all you can do is pay attention to this and two to the filling quantities. Newer vehicles now indicate on the dashboard when a refill is needed and even tell you how much to fill the system. Older AdBlue systems don't have this. It says there that there are still 2,400 kilometers left. This older system is the worst because a typical mistake from users is that they pour until the filler hole is not flowing. The saturation of the system, by the way, has a level indicator, but if we overfill it after a while, the system gets confused by software and can't decide how much is in it. If we look at the live data with diagnostics, there are some that show that it is at 103%, which is not normal because we can't go above 100%. This is usually an overfilled system. What happens with these cars is that it doesn't acknowledge the refill, so the dashboard constantly skips the message to refill, even though we have filled it. One of the mistakes is overcharging. The other is that every car has a description in its user manual, which no one usually reads, of course. That's right. Why not? The steps after filling, what to do. For example, with Peugeot, the older type of Peugeot, the regulation is that if we have filled the system, closed the cap, we are not allowed to touch the car. Open it, close it, turn on the ignition for five minutes, nothing happens for five minutes. The manufacturer assumed that we fill it at a gas station, and then the five minutes, that's basically us getting in. 
pain coming out. And then there is another moment that is important, that if we get into the car, turn on the ignition, we should wait 10 seconds or the other step with Renault, for example, is to idle for 10 seconds without starting. So reading the user manual would be important from the point of view of the system so far, if someone has such a car, to read it, to do this much for themselves so that at least the system does not collapse in terms of software. Are these more typical of first generation Adboo systems? Yes, typically for those there. After all, even this car, which is a year and a half old, already has everything written on the dashboard. Yes, they say the dashboard will tell you how much to fill in. Doesn't the user manual also say how much you should pour into a completely drained system? Say, at the first mark, what is the maximum amount that can be poured in? And here the emphasis is on the maximum. So that's important to, that's right. to check it. So it's the same thing I said, avoiding overfilling. This software crash is typical of Dacia Renault, where it simply doesn't recognize that it's filled. These two systems, the tank and the engine controller, can't synchronize, right? And in this case, a software update to the engine controller solves the problem. And then if I understand correctly the system, if it is overfilled and doesn't really sense the level, then the biggest problem is that it stops the car. And in many cars, the car doesn't start again after topping up. But then you have to take it to the service station. That's right. It's typically part of an environmental protection system. So it will immediately signal the first error. In these cases, if the system doesn't sense that order has been restored, that everything is working optimally, it starts a countdown shows 400 kilometers, right? And then it goes down nicely. This is not real kilometers because there is also a number of starts in it, but they don't indicate that anywhere, but you shouldn't rely on this to say that I still have 300 kilometers. Because in 300 kilometers, it is possible that it allows a maximum of 25 starts or 50 starts. And these have a tank capacity around 15 to 17 liters. So if you fill it up when it says that number, you can travel about five to 6,000 kilometers with it because it's about five to 8% of large, the consumption. Yes. It's worth checking when the first signal appears so that you That's can right. go and then charge it you can know at the latest. That's right, the maximum, according to the manual, is the maximum amount that can be filled at the mark. That's what you have to put in. But if in such a case, for example, I did it very often, that's still better than and I just bought the five liter bottle and poured it in, that's the safest thing to do. According to my observation, one of the faults is the injector. Where it is injected into the exhaust gas, the lifespan of these is approximately 200,000 kilometers, after which it is expected that it will get tired. One characteristic is that it cracks and starts to flow outside. The other is that it starts to drip and does the same crystallization inside the exhaust system. And after that, the atomization picture will not be good. So the injected urea liquid will not mix well. The efficiency will not be good. And the fault countdown begins. So at such 200,000 kilometers, if mine were like this, then I would replace the injector around By there. the way, if you take it to the service center for a general service, such as an oil change and so on, can it be checked every 50,000 kilometers? Or do you have to pay attention to this? So can you prevent this from happening in a way? Practically from then on, if an error occurs, it is advisable. So in Hungarian, if... This can be prevented by uploading. The user only knows how to upload professionally. Use it, and if there is an error message, it's service it. time. I That's understand. Right. And make sure it doesn't appear somewhere. So it's a good idea when we're using a car to open the hood sometimes and look inside to see if we see anything, anything interesting. Or if we regularly park in the same place, then look at the parking space. Because this will occur, and this crystallized liquid is very noticeable on the asphalt. Why did the European Union bring this regulation? I think it's because more powerful engines with better fuel economy, since we're not eliminating the amount of nitrogen oxide here, but with this system, and that's why they were able to continue to keep more powerful, more fuel efficient cars in line with stricter standards, right? Diesel, as a technology, cannot be eliminated from the automotive industry. Because we can never replace buses and trucks with anything else, it is impossible with gasoline because there is no torque. So we have to leave diesel cars, vans, etc. on the entire range, right? They always consume less than gasoline, and due to physics, they will produce nitrogen oxide whether we want them to or not. And this is how we can meet that's environmental right, that's right. standards. That's right, that's right. With an AdBlue system, and now it's being refined. 
so they're getting better and better. In the beginning, there were complete tank changes at 40,000 kilometers, and it was typical for Peugeot and Citroën that they were already tired at 40,000 kilometers. Well, it has almost 43,000 kilometers on it now, and we just check it over, and it's relatively faultless. I recently diagnosed a Peugeot 208. It has crossed 200,000 kilometers. It has never had any problems before. Now it started with the injector cracking and starting to work out of order. So what you just said. The fault was caused by mileage and an injector costs around 150 to 200 euros. And replacing it will keep the system running. And I think this is important because the first passenger car, diesels, came out in 2014, which had to be installed in them. So now they are 10, 11 years old cars. They are now appearing more on the used market next to regular conventional diesels. And I think this is a general information that you have just given here. What someone who buys one now should be prepared for, what to look out for during the inspection and what cost it may initial. Yes, it is practical and diagnosing it is not that complicated for mechanics. It requires some follow-up and additional training, but it can be diagnosed quite well in practice with a few instruments, a watch, and physical disassembly. We are here again this Saturday, where you gave a lecture at the DDC LTD, site on how they can diagnose this. What are the things you tell the mechanics about this? What is worth paying attention to? This part of one of the blocks of the professional days held here is the particulate filter the Add Blue system and the FAP system. This is the last of such a triple block, a block called Diagnostics. We are practically trying to teach the mechanics how to diagnose system errors very quickly. These have two sensors built in, two nitrogen oxide sensors, for example. These are mini computers. Apart from the fact that they look like a Lambda probe, you can't do very extensive diagnostics with them because either we communicate or we don't. If it gives an error about a heating failure, then that's the whole replacement. So there's no big secret in this part. All the others are about how to measure pressure, to find where the error is in the system, to camera out deposits. Zoli, thank you very much for telling us all this useful information. I think we learned a lot from this video. Many of you could learn as individuals. And if you would like to come to such a course, I will put the contact information of DDCLTD in the description. If you have any question, you can ask Zoltan in the comments field. Have a nice day, take care of yourself and bye. Hello. Professional trainings at DDC LTD are held on Saturdays this year between 13th of September and 15th of November. You can find the link in the description where you can apply.